Hello, beloved brethren. Hope you're all doing well. Um, we've had some people come on and love you all in the name of Jesus. I love all mankind all, from every nation, tribe, and tongue. But any um, deception, I'm going to trample it down with the Word of God because it's just, it's not going to be part of the body of Christ anymore. The Word of God is going to do it through me and through all my brethren, people like Brother um, brother from Wretched Knucklehead Channel, sister from up north who lives up um, north, and she and her daughter go around and tell everyone that Jesus loves them. Um, the Spirit is is going to bring in the truth, like my sister in Australia who's bringing in the truth, who doesn't get deceived from doctrines of devils, or my brother in Christ who's in England who is giving the good news of Jesus Christ on the streets, and um, destroying all of the doctrines of devils there and um, like my brother in Christ in, um, in Sacramento who's destroying the doctrines of the devils but who's who's our head we have to have a head the head is our Lord in heaven he's our governor okay he governs his body he governs his people as it says in the scriptures that uh, he would be a governor and the um, the government would, government would be on his shoulder and and so God says that Jesus is his right arm his son the right arm of the Lord that is revealed to us but the world doesn't know him it's not revealed to them God is re is is uncovering it right now he's uncovering their status what they are right now like Jesus did in Matthew 23 he told those that claimed to, that were of Jerusalem but were serpents he said ye serpents ye vipers and John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers so he's revealing what they are behaving like, their ungodly deeds that are wicked, which um, the last kingdom Daniel said would be Rome. Uh, the scriptures talk about Rome, and I've shown uh, pictures of the, the image of the beast, okay? There's different kingdoms, Medo-Persia, we had uh, Rome, Greece, we had Greece, we had Babylon, um, we had uh, Egypt ruling over God's people, and in the end, Rome is the last one, but it's mingled with something else there and this is where people need to have wisdom and understanding of the end because um, uh, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega as you see here in Revelation of Jesus Christ chapter 1 verse 8 he is the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the ending saith the Lord okay David said the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool <laughs> Jesus said that you know gave a parable of the wicked husbandman that God would come in the end, the Father, <laughs> and burn up everything that is not of him. Mystery Babylon burns. It's with the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then a stone. He talks about a stone that comes to crush. And Jesus and the, the prophets talked about the stone of crushing. And this stone will crush. Jesus talked about it. And it would. some of them will break out to a viper. Okay. Why? Because the word of God crushes them. That stumbling stone, that stumbling block that, that they're stumbling over, that true and tried stone, Jesus Christ, that head, which they have rejected, the builders that are building, they've rejected, they've built on their own, they have made their own, um, their own place, okay, they've made their own, uh, what is it called, uh, their own tabernacle. And it's a tabernacle that that bears thorns, and it's not a good thing. Okay, it's it's the the builders are rejecting the the commander in chief, a chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, the head, our head, the Lord in heaven, and we put on the mind of Christ so that we could hear the Lord in heaven, and He could do what He's going to do in this end time, which is crush the head of the serpent. That's what He's doing in our time. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but he's a stone of stumbling to, Jesus is a stone of stumbling to um, Jerusalem that is rebelling against him, the harlot, the mother of harlots. And she is in bed fornicating with Rome, which is also Greece. We talked about the Greek fraternities and sororities, and they are the tempters, the influencers, the hexers, the vexers. They make all manner of merchandise for everyone to buy and sell. And they sit on the people of the living God and oppress them. That's the, like a big beast that the woman rides. And what's in the woman and her, her children? Well, just like we have a head, the Lord in heaven, the word of God. And our 
body becomes a vessel for his spirit, his Holy Spirit, in the Son of Man. So we are dead and buried, and our life is hid in him, and he is in us. So it's not us that we're living stones. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. If you give life to the beast, to sin and wickedness, then that gives dominion of your your uh, your heart to the enemy. That's dividing your land and giving that land to the enemy. But in the in, in the end, it, you're, they still belong to God. Um, everything belongs to God, but He knows His. That's the that's the key. One of the keys that God has shown me, I have in my pockets. I've got many keys in my pockets, but it's really Jesus that has the keys um, because He's in me. He's walking in my heart, and and heaven is within us. But for the end, he's the Lord in heaven, our head. He is teaching us and guiding us. He came from above. But the devil and his army, it says in the scriptures, they have an angel over them, a king, the angel of the bottomless pit that comes up, comes up from the pit. And his children are like smoke. And I saw a witch. She was a smoke. She had, she was nothing but smoke. So sorcerers in Revelation are smoke. Even if they claim the name of Jesus, they have rejected him um, in their heart. And God says that he resists the proud. So he, they didn't get the gift of the Holy Ghost. What was it Simon the sorcerer in? He was in the gall of bitterness and bonds of iniquity, bound by Satan. The mother harlot has iniquity in her forehead with her children, has iniquity in their forehead. So the father of lies, the, the, they become the sons of the sorceress, Mystery Babylon the harlot. And sons of the sorceress do all manner of witchcraft, sorcery. It says in the scriptures, they have a seed that comes out of them, which is the poison of the tongue of the serpent. That's the serpent's tongue, the Egyptian tongue, the, the, the sea of the Egyptian. So their words are from below. Does that make sense? That's what the scriptures are, are telling us. So look up the tongue of the Egyptian sea will be destroyed by the almighty God. And look up the, um, the sorcerers everywhere in the scriptures talks about the sons of the sorceress. Look up in the scriptures um, where God is saying their, their words are like the ungodly men's words are like the, the seed of a serpent, like an egg. It talks about an egg. And, it, and that's why Jesus, he, when he crushes them, that they break out into a serpent, a viper. Um, and remember, for saints, just like Moses, serpents aren't going to hurt you, okay? Um, that's what people are trying to make you think. And certainly, I don't recommend anybody taking any of those serpent bites they're talking about. But what I would say, because God warned one of my brethren, because it pollutes, it pollutes your lamp, okay? We're supposed to be a lamp in the world. And apparently it can, you can have your lamp covered and God did not mean for our lamps to be covered. And that's, I think how the lamps get covered. But remember the head, the Lord in heaven, his lamp is not going to be covered. This is why in this covenant, the blood testimony of the new Testament that's in his blood is so great that over all the covenants, it is the greatest covenant because we live by faith. And once you get born again, that seed of the word remains in you, that incorruptible seed. And so if you get taken by the wolf or the serpent like takes you, don't you think that Jesus is going to come and rescue you and leave the 99 and come and rescue? He will. I believe it. And I don't believe he's going to let anyone, any man pluck you out of his hand. He's not going to let any angel, demon, principality, power pluck you out of his hand. It says in the scriptures, do you believe the word? That's the trick. Do you believe? That's a key. Do you believe the word of God? Do you believe what he said? Do you believe he's a faithful and true witness? And he said he would not lose one of his. So that's where we have to stand on the rock. See, we stand on that rock, on the stone. They stumble over it. They get crushed by it. And they break out into a serpent. When we, when we stand on it, we're not going to be crushed by it. That's why Jesus said that he will be with us in the fire and in the waters. So Jesus, just like he was with Madchak, Meshach, and Abednego, the Son of Man, one like the Son of Man, was with them in the fiery furnace of um, Nebuchadnezzar, which set up the fiery furnace. Anyone that would not bow down, he set up a, an image, 
He said, this is the image. Everybody needs to bow to it. And these three are like, no, I can't. I, I'm worshiping God. And that's what we say to the image they've set up in our time. There's many images, but there's one main image that people are not focusing in on because everyone sees a dragon as a fiery flying thing. And certainly they are in the spiritual because they fly around and, and devour people in the spiritual city of great mystery Babylon. All right. And they come and they come out and they kill, steal, and destroy. So in Psalms of David, God says that we are put through David. He said that we were put in the place of the dragons and the serpents. Where was Adam and Eve put out of? The paradise of the living God into a place. Where was the serpent put out of? Out of the paradise of God into a place. All right. And the serpent was judged. Even Adam and Eve were preserved. Very different. The serpent was judged for deceiving Eve. Adam and Eve were put out because so they wouldn't eat of the tree of life and die in spiritual death forever. So that's the important thing and um, that we need to understand. So when Jesus died on the cross on the tree, he took the man next to him back to paradise. He says, today you will be with me in paradise because he believed he believed God that this is the heir of the kingdom. And he said, when you get to the king, your kingdom, remember me. Don't forget me when you're in the, your kingdom on your throne. Remember me here. I'm a thief and I did all these awful things. I'm on this cross dying on this tree just like you. But you didn't do anything, Jesus. Remember that. Jesus can take us home. And when you have that seed of the word, that, that seed, that seal of the living God, that seal that that testimony that Jesus, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, that still from the Holy Spirit that comes in and seals you, a gift, you know, you, you're always his, and he will come and get you. Now, we are to depart from sin. He says, depart from all evil. He says that, you know, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature, old things have passed away, you're no longer sin. You're no longer a servant to sin. You're now a servant to righteousness. Do we say we have no sin? No, the scriptures say we don't say we don't have any sin. No, we say Jesus is our righteousness and then we walk in that righteousness. Because sin, the wages of sin is death. And even the apostles said to the saints, the wages of sin is still death. So you don't want to be following after sin. A lot of people are saying, saying something completely different. And that's a totally different gospel. Other than we have to remain in the doctrines of Christ, Jesus said. And the apostle said, apart from him, and Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. You cannot bear fruit. And that's the job of a saint. You know, we're to be here, lights in the world, so people would want what we have. We have life. We have Jesus. We have the light of the world. And so that they would want what we have and want and ask us. Like I had a, a woman, um, she's one of my best friends, uh, growing up at, as young mothers. We were mothers together. And... Um, you know, in, in our 20s and 30s and 40s and all the way to, you know, our 50s. But in our 40s, her husband and her got a divorce and she was very broken. And she came to me and she said, you, your children are so, your daughter is so kind. And she says, and you have gone through so much and been through so much. I've been through a lot. <laughs> she knew it. And she said, but you always come out with light, with life, and you don't seem to be broken by whatever it is that, that attacks you, the, the life. And, and the whole time, she's, you know, all about, um, you know, this philosophy world and, and, you know, didn't believe in Jesus, you know, and I believed in Jesus and I, everybody knows that I believe in Jesus since I was a child. Everyone knew that I believed in Jesus. I always carried my Bible since I was a child. Doesn't mean I was walking right. And, and that's where, you know, Jesus came and said, you know, you're my child. You're supposed to walk in holiness, you're supposed to walk in righteousness. And so we got me cleaned up. Thank you, Lord. Um, and so, uh, so walk in holiness. That's what he wants from us. He says that if you walk in the spirit um, and you mortify the deeds of the flesh, that means you die with Christ. You completely die to yourself. That's what it means. And so Christ can be formed in you um, by faith. It's by faith that you're saved, beloved. Just like Abraham, that seed of the word that's sown in the heart. Anyways, back to the story. So our, my, my friend, eventually when she had trouble come, 
she came to me and she was crying and she said, you know, um, I want to know, I know you have Jesus. I, I want, I want to have him in my life. That night, she got born again. She got the gospel. She got born again. Thank you, Lord. I prayed for her. I told her all the time about Jesus. And eventually, she got born again. Praise the Lord. And then she, I prayed that she would find a man. She really wanted a man. And so I prayed that she got a man that would be her equal. And that he would also be someone that loves Christ. And praise the Lord, she gave, he gave her a, a, he was a, he's a, like a colonel or a sergeant in the army or something. And he was a born again Christian and his family, his father, I think, and I was a preacher. And so praise the Lord for that. And, uh, so with that, I just want to praise our Lord and savior for that soul that got saved. Hallelujah. Before we go on. And so, you know, that is what it's all about. It's about people getting born again and, and life being saved. Um, and in Matthew 23, wow, that the Holy Spirit just came upon me in that, in that message, because, you know, I still loved her, even though she wasn't born again, she wasn't the light in the world. She was walking in unbelief, in darkness. And I told her not to hate her ex because we're called to love anyone. And he was being her enemy. And I said, you have to love your enemies. And that's the hardest thing as a saint. And there's been times that I've, I've not loved them until Jesus really, really brought the word back to my memory and reminds me, you know, we're supposed to love our enemies and do good to those who oppress us. And we have been oppressed. And there's going to come a time whenever we're going to have to do good to them. And we have to bless our enemies, as the word says. So we bless all of our enemies that have come against us. Because by our work in the Lord, many will be um, saved by the Lord. Now, the Lord adds to the church daily. We have no control over someone's salvation. I have no control over your heart, nor to make you born again. Only he can give you eternal life. Only he can draw you. Only God can draw you. And it depends on where your heart is. So Pharaoh, his heart was cold. So God used him and hardened his heart even further. So if you have a cold, dark heart, and you love money and the root of all evil, God may use you as a tool, but in the end, you know, you're going to fall like Pharaoh and his army. That's just the truth of the matter. And in our world, we have huge armies that are... Are rejecting that commander-in-chief the chief cornerstone and I believe they're changing their mind which is we've we've suffered long with them and I believe they're changing their mind and in this time I believe something's going to happen very very soon suddenly and it says that Jesus the Word of God is that the the enemy surrounds the camp of the Saints it says in Revelation and then fire falls down out of heaven and devours all of them I believe the word is, is spur, at first it says that um, he destroys them with the breath of his mouth. And so in Second Thessalonians or something, and then in Revelation, the word of God speaks. You see he has fire, a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. That's his word as he moves his word. Not as we do, because in, in uh, Acts, the apostle um, who was supposed to be giving the word to someone uh, a man came and he was a false prophet. He was a proclaiming Jew. He was a Jew, it says in that scripture, Acts 13, which 13 met, represents rebellion, came to turn this man away from hearing the, the word of God, hearing of the faith of Jesus Christ. And God judged that man. The Holy Ghost suddenly came in, that apostle, and God judged that man, made, made a judgment on that man. So... Um, he called him a subtle beast, child of the devil, and he was claiming to be a Jew. So there's many scriptures that God has shown me um, in Revelation 13, which, you know, 13 represents rebellion. He's shown me many scriptures that represent the destroyers, the deceivers, the ones that want to cover God's glory. And God said in that scripture, Acts 13, how long, um, 
How long will you pervert the right ways of God? And he's talking about covering their, his glory. So that man that wanted to hear the word of God, they were going to speak the word of faith so that he can come in and be part of the kingdom of faith. But what that that offender did was wanted to cover the word, wanted to stop the faith. And in our time, God is not going to allow that to happen anymore. They're just going to be judged left and right in this generation. And look at that judgment. That's going to come stronger and stronger in the end. And Mystery Babylon, which we know is the harlot, and her children, which are the kings of the earth, with both of them, both the harlot and the kings of the earth, which we see Rome in there, we see Greece in there, we see um, the goats, Greece, we see, because Jesus takes the sheep and the goats and he separates them in Matthew 13. There's another rebellion scripture. Um, Revelation 13, he talks about um, the same thing. Uh, he's going to destroy death in the end. Death and hell be cast into the lake of fire. And these people sow in death into the world. We bring life. We sow the seed of the word, faith, to, so that people would have faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. To hear his word is important for faith to be developed. But what Mystery Babylon, the harlot, and the kings of the earth, the goats, um, which Daniel talks about, that last kingdom, Roman Empire, which many of them claim to be Christian. Many of them claim to be God's children. Many of them speak the name Jesus, but what Jesus have they come with? A, a, a Jesus that speaks with a dragon tongue? That's why Jesus said, many will come saying, here is Christ, there is Christ. He said, believe it not. Go not after them. So these have the spirit of iniquity in them and they love money or they're the, the, the ones, the seed that was sown in thorns and thistles, nigh unto cursing and burning, God says, because God says he's going to burn up everything that exalts itself above God and all that's worshipped in the end. So the influencers of evil, the sons of the sorceress, the gates of hell, joined to the harlot, which are the, the, the priests of Baal, and then the tell, the false prophets, that tongue that speaks out of them is fr coming from below. It's coming from the angel of the bottomless pit. And they have an angel uh, an angel over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. That's their king. But they do iniquity. They do what he tells them to do. And those kings of the earth, the, the mighty men, the merchant men, the sorcerers, they attach themselves to God's children. Okay, They are like... Um, what do you call it? Klingons. <laughs> they want to oppress these spirits. We're, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And principalities are governments in the world. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This is a spiritual kingdom. This is a giant city. A great city, God says, Mystery Babylon, that burns. They burn. God's going to keep burning them. And he, God said... That he will kill her children with death. Revelation 13. Another 13 rebellion. These are deceivers. They have destroyed life. We, we with the word of God destroy the lies, the deceit, and death. Now yes, God uses his angels to bring plagues on the earth. And that's what you see in Revelation. And I was reading today and talking to the Lord about First Chronicles. Where God uses the, the sword of the angel of the Lord. The, which we know the sword in Ephesians 6 is the word of God. He brought plagues to the world. And 1 Corinthians 18, 13 through 14, and he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants, which Jesus is on David's throne. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So everywhere he went, he was being preserved. So David, which Jesus is on David's throne, the heritage of David. We see Psalms of David are very important for the end time. So David reigned over all Israel and executed judgment and justice among all his people. So that this is very important part of the kingdom. Judgment and justice is his end time work, as we see in Revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of God is doing it. So, but we don't just have the saints, the testimony of our witness that says that Jesus is the Christ, but we have the holy angels and we have all those that would be the saints that went before us, which are the cloud of witnesses watching over. And all of us 
warring against the beast in the end, this this defeats the enemy. So number one, why is it why the judgments and judgment of God and justice, righteous judgment and righteous justice? The, it says in the scriptures, the just shall live by faith. So the just judges in the earth are judging and they are saints, according to the scriptures in Epistle of Jude and in Revelation of Jesus Christ. Now we don't judge to condemn to death. We don't we judge to condemn the devils as Matthew thirteen. I think it's Matthew 13, Father. Yeah, another Matthew 13. We bind up those that offend and those that do iniquity. What did I say earlier about the spirit of iniquity is in Mystery Babylon, the harlot, and in the kings of the earth, in between their forehead? Just like Judas Iscariot was a devil, and then Satan entered into him. So this is a son, a vile man inside of these people. Son of perdition is inside of them. And everyone inside of that, they, these are devils. These are influencers of evil, gates of hell. See, we're gates from heaven. And it says in, I, in Psalms of David, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and the king of glory will come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. This is, this is the word of God, Jesus, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. The word is the spirit, but it's also the sword. So we're supposed to be wise as serpents who use the sword. They know the word of God, but they deceive with it. We're not like them who are unrighteous and use the word in unrighteousness. We're like them that use the word in holiness and in righteousness and in justice and in truth and offering mercy and grace. So we understand with understanding because we are with the Messiah. Because apart from him, we could do nothing. That's his spirit with us. So harmless as, as doves is, yes, we speak with the word of God to develop faith. And, we, and whenever someone gets born again, God can baptize them with the spirit that is with us and in us so that they can get saved. So Jesus is drawing all men into him out of that darkness because they're sitting in darkness. He calls them out of Egypt, out of darkness, out of sin. That's what Egypt rep represents. So her children are sent to Israel and her children to draw them into the darkness with themselves in order to own them, possess them, like the Israelite man who was bound by the legion of devils. So God's going to destroy those legion of devils in this end time. 